Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Convocation. <laughs> Welcome to Albright's 2021 Convocation. Would you please stand with me as we have the invocation? An invocation from Psalm 104. We bless you, O Lord our God, for you are very great. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You make the clouds your chariot. You have set the earth on its foundations and covered the deep as with a garment. You make springs gush forth in the valleys, and you care for the needs of every animal. You give us food and wine, oil and bread, so that we may receive joy and sustenance in this earth. You mark the days, the times, and the seasons. You give us our work, our labor, our ability to understand creation and apply that wisdom with the creativity you give us. Indeed, your works are everywhere, and in them we see the wisdom and beauty of your creation. In everything, we see the work of your spirit in the creation and sustaining of the universe. O Lord, may your glory endure forever. May we, along with you, rejoice in your works. Let us sing to you as long as we live. Let us sing praise to our God while we have our being. May the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, and may we rejoice in you, O Lord. We bless you with great praise. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, sorry, you may not be seated. <laughs> I got it wrong again. I've done this once before. You may be seated. <laughs> Good morning. Really? <laughs> Good morning. Ah, there we go. It's so great to see you here. I'm so excited that you could join us. Um, thank you, Kyle and Olivia, uh, for your beautiful musical performances that, it, that uh, welcomed us and the Washington Memorial Pipe Band who announced the arrival of faculty, staff, and platform party. We love the Pipers. Uh, thank you also to the Virtual Convocation Choir. Um, and uh, under the direction of uh, Justin Schomper, our Director of Choral Activities, and accompanied by Jeff Lentz, Senior Artist in Residence. 
Uh, they will be back also virtually later in the program. Thank you also to um, our marshals and our pops and facilities. Yeah, there we go. And conferences and athletic staff who work so diligently behind the scenes to get this morning all ready for us so that we could have a special welcome for you. And thank you also to my assistant, Karen Shooker. Um, this is a big deal for us. It's so exciting for us to be able to welcome you here. So what's convocation? <laughs> you probably were asking about this. What does that mean? Um, it's a word derived from the Latin, convocare, which means to call together. So we called you here. In an academic community, we come together to celebrate and welcome our first year and new students. And we also convoke, if that's a verb, uh, at the capstone celebration of graduating seniors. This is our recognition of the scholarly circle of life. One comes in and the other goes out. We celebrate these entrances and exits because students are our lifeblood, so it's like our circulation. The incoming class, you, first year students and new transfers to Albright, come in with great potential. It's just exciting, we have no idea what to expect. Uh, but great potential to learn and to grow, uh, to expand your sense of individuality alongside an expanding set of experiences that center on a sense of belonging to your college, your alma mater, more Latin, literally meaning generous mother, but referring to something providing nourishment. Mm, food for thought, maybe? I'm not sure. In turn, the graduating seniors go out with great potential to demonstrate the skill sets that they have developed in their time here, to advance their career aspirations, and lifelong learning while making important contributions to society. As members of the academic community, we love being part of this celebration and part of this process. At Albright, our convocation is a true calling together of members of our community who have gathered here today to welcome you, our newest Albrightians, into our learning community. I am pleased to introduce you to many of the people who make Albright such a thriving and thoughtful community. These colleagues who will be joining us this morning represent our many resources at Albright. They are just a few of the many people who will support you and guide you in ways both seen and unseen as you embark and continue your educational journey with us. Inspired by the opening ceremony of the Olympics, I guess that was their convocation, uh, we have pulled together teams from across campus. Please hold your applause until I finish introducing everyone, although you can cheer along with them. Uh, but listen carefully to their names and their areas and look for their faces, masked and unmasked, on campus in the days ahead as you begin to familiarize yourself with your new community. You ready? Representing the President's and Events Office, Kathy Caffancelli, Chief of Staff, Lana Hoffler, Executive Secretary and Scheduler to the President, Lois Kubinak, Director of College Events, Conferences and Camps, Cynthia Streeter, Process Improvement Manager, Elaine Bowman, Event Setup Supervisor, Mike Bowman, Event Setup Staff, and George Padisky, Event Setup Staff. Rep <laughs> there you go. Representing, okay. Representing the Academic Learning Center and Writing Center. Rachel Liberatori, Director of Writing Center and Tutoring Services. Michelle Kramer, Director of Student Success. Becky McAwicki, Assistant Director in Academic Learning Center. Shelly Kaufman, Academic Coach and Geology Adjunct Professor. And Ann Coleman, Assistant Provost. Representing Team Library, Charlie Colombo, Instruction and Reference Librarian, and Sue Gallagher, Cataloging Technician. Representing Team Facilities, Brad King, Project Manager, Michelle Bialek, Office Manager and Mailroom Manager, Rich Kohler, Operations and Custodial Manager, Rick O'Leary, Director of Facilities. Real team here, representing athletics, Rick Ferry, co-athletic director and head, head men's basketball coach, Jeff Feiler, assistant athletic director and head baseball coach, Jen Willis, assistant athletic director and head women's lacrosse coach, James Malone, head men's lacrosse coach, a member of Sightsee, and Matt Hagee, sports information director. <laughs> representing team, oh, woo! 
representing the Experiential Learning and Career Development Center, Charlotte Palmer, Career Development Coach, Jim Justison, Director of Experiential Learning and Study Abroad, and Sarah Widener, Administrative Assistant. <laughs> Little short team here, representing the Student Government Association, Dylan Cope, your President. Representing the Office of Student Success, Dr. Michael Verno, Director of the Office. Robin Vasek, Student Success Specialist. And Lisa Blount, Student Success Specialist. <laughs> Representing Enrollment Management Division, The Lion. <laughs> Dwayne Walker, Vice President for Enrollment Management. Nikki Mendoza, Assistant to the Vice President of Enrollment Management. From Admissions, Jen Williamson, Director of Admission. Colette Joyelle, Director of Enrollment Management. Nicole Christie, Senior Associate Director. Ian Ammerman, Admissions Counselor. Sean Barzinski, Assistant Director. Leslie Black, Visit Coordinator. Margarita Lucas, Assistant Director of Admission. Mark Detterline, Assistant Director of Admission. Jill Ju, Spectator and Management. Gabriella Marrero, Senior Admission Counselor. Alex Willis, Admission Counselor. And Veronica Winder. Representing financial aid, Suzanne Sparrow, Director of Financial Aid, Sierra Snyder, a line in front, buddy. <laughs> Sierra Snyder, Associate Director of Financial Aid, Grace Miller, Finance Advisor, Tiffany Smith, Front Desk Receptionist, and Monica Williams, Assistant Director. <laughs> Our Vice President for Finance and Strategic Partnerships, Jeff Strader. Our Vice President for Digital Strategies and Infrastructure and Chief Information Officer, Jason Herr. From the Communications Division, Gina French, Creative Director, Carrie Manzalillo, Director of Communication, and Jen Stout, Vice President of Communications. From Advancement. From Advancement, Wendy Parsons, Vice President for Advancement, Amanda Walk, Director of the Annual Fund for Albright, and Brian Pinto, Assistant Vice President of Major and Planned Giving. Our Associate Dean of First Year Experience in General Education, Rob Seasongood, from our School of Professional Studies. Boris Phillips, Dean, Stephanie Walker, Assistant Dean of Enrollment Management, and Janelle Bentz, Operations Director. And last but not least, from Student and Campus Life, Dr. Sam Wessner, Senior Vice President of Student and Campus Life and Chief Health Officer. Lisa Glenn, Assistant to Senior Vice President. Becky Aki, Dean of Students. Sandy Bain. Dr. Mel Sensenig, Albright Chaplain. Our Mace Bearer, representing our long serving and tenured faculty, having served on Albright's faculty for 35 years, Dr. Farhad Saburi. And representing our newest faculty, let's welcome also Eponine Lures, visiting instructor of French, and Laura Lopez, instructor of Spanish. Welcome. <laughs> and finally, let me introduce the 15th president of Albright College, a proud Albright graduate, Pennsylvania native, and distinguished scientist, Dr. Jackie Fetro, class of 1982, professor of chemistry and biochemistry. Dr. Fetro is beginning her fifth year as an Albright president to lead us forward in an inclusive, thriving, and equitable community committed to the success and well-being of every Albright student. Dr. Fetro. Thank you, Karen, for that amazing, well, what do you think? Was that like the Olympic welcome or what? Nice 
Good morning, Albright College, and welcome to the opening of our 2021-22 20, academic year. Woo! <laughs> this morning, I want to send, uh, send a special welcome to our new students, the class of Albright 2025, transfer students, and international students. Some of you come from as close as Canada, and as far away as Russia and South Korea. Welcome to the beginning of our academic year. I also want to extend a warm welcome to the Albright, returning Albright students, especially the Pops. Come on, Pops. You guys were awesome. You were doing cheers yesterday. I captured a few of you. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And a welcome, okay, faculty and staff, can you be more enthusiastic than the Pops? A special welcome to the faculty and staff of Albright College. I also wanna thank each of you for being mindful of the health and safety of other Albrightians. By wearing masks, as we announced yesterday, and adopting responsible measures to minimize the spread of COVID-19. The care of our community and its members is an important value at Albright College. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for what you are doing now and for what you will continue to do throughout the semester. As we have learned from our provost, today, today we gather for this event called Convocation. And convocation literally means the calling together of people. Thus, we are called together, Albright students, Albright faculty, and Albright staff, to celebrate the opening of our 21-22 academic year. The start of new academic years like this one offer us opportunities. Opportunities for new relationships, new perspectives, and new beginnings. As I shared yesterday in my welcome to the new students, Albright offers many opportunities for each of us, each student, each faculty member, each staff member, to, to make new friends, to uh, uh, attend new experiences, new classes, take majors, experience events, athletic events, seminar speakers, theater and gallery events, among many, many others. The opportunities available at Albright College are bountiful, and today, I challenge each of us, faculty, staff, new students, and student leaders and returning students, to take advantage of this beginning of this academic year. Make it an academic year like no other. Challenge yourself to engage in the Albright community as you have never done before. And we have so much going on this semester, and I'm gonna name just a couple of small ones. We are welcoming Adrian Danrich, an Emmy Award winning si uh, singer, poet, composer, and creator who soloed at Carnegie Hall. She'll be joining us for Empowering Albright Voices Day in October. Her performance, in her performances, Ms. Danrich celebrates the power of music to unify and to inspire healing, joy, laughter, and love, and community. You won't want to miss this event. In November, our annual Leo Camp lecture will feature Dr. James Grimes and his book on Violins of Hope, as well as Afshi Weinstein, who restored the violins that were rescued from the Holocaust. And these two will be joined by professional violinist Todd Bornstein. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event, the Violins of Hope coming to Reading, Pennsylvania. Albright's own Friedman Gallery is offering three exhibitions for discussion around gender, gender identity, and gender nonconformity, including the major traveling exhibition, Blurring Boundaries, which will be in the main gallery the entire semester and features the work of 50 female artists. And finally, in September, the Albright Fashion Program, for the first time ever, will have a fashion show at New York Fashion Week. 
There will be much to celebrate as we will be the only undergraduate college to have students and alumni portfolios designed by our students and our alumni on the runway during Fashion Week in New York. And there's so much more I don't have time to share. So much to be proud of, so much to take advantage of at Albright College. At the beginning of this academic year, I commit each of us, commit to engaging with the Albright community as you have not done before. Commit to an experience, an event that you normally wouldn't attend, perhaps one that pushes you outside of your comfort zone. Commit to moving beyond your own social group, your own work group, your own office group. Get to know your Albright community and commit to engaging with the city of Reading. Each and every one of us, faculty, staff, and students, our experience of and our engagement with the Albright community will be enhanced by this effort. Personally, I'm looking forward to getting to know each of the new students that we are welcoming to Albright and to catch up with returning faculty and staff and students who I'm not, whom I've not seen for a long time. Albright College, I am thrilled to welcome you to the opening of Albright College's 21-22 academic year. Thank you. Thank you, President Fetro. Um, every spring at our last faculty meeting of the year, we take time to honor faculty members who have made outstanding contributions to teaching and in their professional fields. Faculty are nominated for these awards by students and other faculty, and it is a great honor to be recognized in this way. The Dr. Henry P. and M. Page Lachlan Distinguished Faculty Award is presented to a faculty member in recognition for outstanding teaching. Our 2021 recipient is Dr. Hilary Aquino, Assistant Professor of History, who is an innovative and dedicated teacher. Dr. Aquino is active in student learning outside traditional classes, having supervised numerous internships, senior theses, and independent studies. Her teaching is grounded in a commitment to challenging students to develop the skills and self-confidence that they will need to be critical, independent th thinkers throughout their studies and throughout their lives. In addition to her contributions to the history curriculum, Dr. Aquino has a strong commitment to the interdisciplinarity that is characteristic of Albright College and is an active part of the programs in public health as well as in women and gender studies. It is my great pleasure to introduce Assistant Professor Hilary Aquino who will deliver today's convocation address. Good morning and welcome to new Albrightians, returning Albrightians, to my fellow faculty members, administrators, and staff. This morning I'm going to speak to you about the role of scholarship and academics. I'll first discuss my own work and then we'll get to why you need to know this now, this morning. I'll try to keep it under an hour. Just kidding, 10 minutes. Want to see if you were paying attention. First, what do they mean by the term scholarship? Scholarship is research conducted by faculty and by students. Each discipline, such as history, political science, music, etc., has its own methodology or way of conducting research. Scholarship allows professors to remain current in the fields we teach exposing us to new theories and or new evidence, which we can then incorporate into our teaching. As an academic, I'm a trained historian, meaning that I studied the methodology of historical research, such as archival work, which I love because it's basically reading people's mail and I'm nosy. My area of specialization is the history of medicine and public health. Yes, such a thing does exist, and I'm privileged to teach it every year at Albright. The other area in which I teach is public health. My background in history has been invaluable in my understanding and teaching of public health. A highly interdisciplinary field itself, public health explains where we are now. History explains why and how we got here. 
My research is focused on the work of a particular individual named Dr. Leona Baumgardner, who held both an MD and a PhD, and she was the commissioner of the Department of Health of New York City in the mid-century, 1954 to 62, and actually the first woman to hold that very prestigious position. While I had access to all of her published materials, her personal archive was not made available in 2010 when it was processed by the archivists at Harvard Medical School where she ended her career. I fortunately received a fellowship, that means money, to work with the collection. Over 80 boxes of her material reflecting her lifetime of accomplishments. I was so excited at this prospect. And this is what research is. To be the first person to uncover or discover something new. I had long wondered about this woman who broke many barriers, yet I would, was limited to basically her personal persona. Reading her personal letters and diaries allowed me to gain a whole new perspective. Told you I was nosy. I finally understood what drove her to focus on social medicine, which is the use of the social sciences and humanities to improve the practice of medicine with a focus on the social determinants of health, the delivery of treatment, and the development of healthcare policies. Public health applies the findings of social medicine to improve services and the health of populations. So basically, medicine is on the individual level, public health is on the population or community level. I was particularly interested in Dr. Baumgartner's communication style. Public health messaging is crucial, as we all now know, and she was the first major public health figure to embrace a multimedia approach in the 1950s using print, radio, and the then new medium of television. She also oversaw the New York City portion of the largest clinical trial in American history, the salt polio vaccine trials, a very large logistical undertaking. She then focused on hard to reach populations, employing mobile units to go into various neighborhoods with low polio vaccination rates, working closely with employers to encourage vaccination, and even calling on Elvis Presley, who, by the way, was one of the most popular stars of his time, in case you don't know who he is, uh, to encourage older teens to get vaccinated. Sound familiar? It should. These are all the methods that the public health community is currently utilizing. All of this history-based knowledge enables me to better assess and understand today's public health approaches. My new project looks at the making of a disease, inflammatory breast cancer. How that disease was identified by researchers as a particular type of breast cancer, the process by which it was recognized as such by the medical community, the insurance industry, and policymakers and most importantly, the role played by patient activists in this process. Only between one and 5% of all diagnosed breast cancer cases are actually inflammatory breast cancer. This is a low incidence rate. However, it's responsible for 10% of all breast cancer deaths, and the five-year survival rate is 41%. This type of cancer disproportionately affects women of color. It has different symptoms. The goal of this research project is to improve health efforts about IBC to ensure earlier detection. For this, I will be calling upon my skills in both history and public health, and I'll need talented students to assist me in my research along the way, hopefully some of you here today. Being a historian also allows me to understand the discussions to date concerning COVID because none of the debates being waged today are new. I know, for example, when influential Boston minister Cotton Mather, who also had a keen interest in science, promoted the smallpox inoculation, which was a precursor to vaccination, in 1721, his house was firebombed. Fortunately, the fuse fell off and it didn't detonate. 
Attached was a note stating, I'll inoculate you with this, with a pox to you. I also know that General George Washington, who himself had contracted smallpox at age 19, ordered that all of his troops be inoculated in 1777. Not a particularly popular decision at the time. I also know that during the 1918 influenza pandemic, schools shut down, workplaces closed, social gatherings were prohibited, mask wearing was implemented, and not without controversy. My students studied this in spring of 2021 in my pandemics course, which I co-taught with my political science colleague, Dr. Irene Langren. In that course, we read about how people your age in 1918 coped with their worlds being turned upside down, how doctors and nurses were panicked and overwhelmed because they had never dealt with a strain of influenza that killed so rapidly. 100 years from now, college students somewhere will be reading about how you and your generation experienced another global pandemic and what meaning you assigned to it in the year 2021. At this point, you may be wondering, why is this woman talking to me about research? I just got to college, I haven't even had a class yet, and I really would still like to be sleeping. And most importantly, how much longer is she gonna talk? Not that much longer. Student research is the most exciting part of college. And while you likely won't be thinking much about it this semester, you will unwittingly be laying the groundwork for a future project. You will read about and discuss new ideas with your professors and classmates. You will hear a professor discuss her or his own research project. This will spark curiosity in you and hopefully lead you to take advantage of one of the many opportunities to engage in research offered at Albright College. Design your own research project that incorporates your interests. Find a professor to work with for an independent study apply to do an ACRE project, and that stands for Albright Creative Research Experience. Unless you attend graduate school, college is really the only time you will have to intellectually explore something that is solely based on your interests. While it may sound daunting, it's actually really exciting. We don't leave you on your own. That happens in grad school. We guide you and help you find your own path, no matter what your major is. So while you are taking your first college courses this semester, think about what interests you most and why, and take it from there. I'll conclude with a few words of advice for you, because you know no one can stand at a stage in a college arena and not give advice. It's normal to feel both excited and anxious. College is a huge adjustment. Not only are you going to grow intellectually, but you'll also be transitioning to adulthood. You may get homesick, feel lonely, or even overwhelmed. Every single first year student experiences this. Talk to others and you will quickly find you are not alone. Talk to your professors in class, before and after class, in office hours, or when you see us around campus. Perhaps your initial experience will be like mine. I was the first in my family to attend college, the daughter of two immigrants. I didn't really know what to expect or if I really belonged. Then I found my passion in French and in history, my double major. I took advantage of what college has to offer. My wish for you is that you have as wonderful an experience as I did. The next time we all meet with the faculty in their regalia and you in the audience will be at your graduation. Between this moment and that moment in time, don't limit yourself. Envision what you want to be and make it happen. This is in your control. Dream big. We will help you get there. Thank you.
How you doing? I wish uh, we had the words for that available for you to read, but we were trying to keep this card small. Um, but you will hear the song for Albright um, many times, I hope, during your time here. Did you watch any of the Olympics this summer? Yes, no? Do you have a favorite event? Gymnastics. Okay. Where's my Canadian? Women's soccer, eh? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's still weird for me to realize that the Olympics were postponed last year uh, because of the pandemic. Um, at that time, I think I was just accepting that, you know, COVID had changed the world and it was just another example of, of something that uh, was going to be postponed. Uh, I remember thinking then, though, about how disappointing that would be for the athletes who had specifically trained to be ready for 2020, especially after, you know, having lived through events here on Albright's campus when our athletes were so disappointed about just missing a season. Um, but this year, everyone got to realize their dreams and represent their country in competition. Those are big dreams. We all have some version of big dreams in our lives. <clears throat> I talked earlier about the great academic circle of life, from welcoming convocation today um, all the way to our sending celebration of graduation. That's a big dream, uh, and it will be here before you know it. Hey, Pops. Hey, what? Are you ready for graduation? Yeah. <laughs> kind of scary, okay. But the reality is that we're mostly, we mostly approach big dreams through little steps, smaller dreams. They've been here for a while, so even daydreams have helped get them there. It's the same for the years of preparation that go into Olympic training. Eventually, it gets to competing for my country, but it starts with one more meter, 10 seconds faster, one more goal, one more save, just a little faster, higher, better. As you engage more with the Albright College community, your life will become more and more filled with many new dreams, little dreams and big dreams, related to all aspects of college life, classes, res life, clubs, athletics, volunteer opportunities, work, social groups, study groups. Whether you have come to college pursuing a specific dream, or even if this is just the next step after high school, college is still a kind of quest, and pursuing those little dreams means that you must keep moving. Nothing ever stays the same. If it's not getting better, it's getting worse. So keep moving. Set your sights on the next goal and work to get there. That's easy to say, but there will be hurdles and challenges, and it will be important to figure out your next steps to pursue in overcoming the hurdles. The important thing is to focus on just the next steps, not the entire journey, just the next phase. I still remember, back in the dark ages, uh, my first semester at college, when I was taking all the steps that I had taken in high school and joined some clubs and competed in athletics and was just cruising along going to my classes. And I was crushed by my first set of exams. Remember, I'm the chief academic officer. I was not then. <laughs> uh, for the first time in my life, I had to figure out how to set new goals and find the next steps. Um, like Professor Aquino, uh, my parents did not go to college. Uh, my father was the eldest of eight children, so after he finished grade six, he started working to help support his family. My mother lasted to high school, but again, quit in grade 10 so that she could work and earn money. I learned a lot of things from my parents. My father taught me a lot about people and how to work with them and how to work hard. And my mother taught me a lot about attention to detail. But my parents didn't know about college. Uh, I think they thought that I knew about college. Um, I thought I knew about college. Um, until that first set of exams. There are many faculty and academic support people here on campus who, like me, were the first in their families to have gone to college. We are called first-generation students now. We didn't know that then, but that's the new term. Um, but we recognize the importance of being here for you and what it's like to be the first in your family to make the step, to achieve this part of your dream. We all figured it out one way or another. And we also learned that it helps to have other people on campus to help our students make those next steps. These are many of the people that you have seen here today and many more that you will meet. Your academic advisor, your resident assistants, your athletic coaches, your first year seminar instructor, your all your instructors, student success specialists, and academic learning center staffs. And Pops! <laughs> 
to be honest, even if your parents did go to college, it's, a lot of this is still up to you. Your journey is unique. This is your dream. It's not the same as their experience. It's not even the same as your friends, or your roommates, or your brothers, or your sisters. It's yours. And the successes will be yours, and the hurdles will be yours, and the next steps that you take in pursuing your dreams will be yours. As Pe Pres Petro said in her welcome last evening, make Albright yours. Nothing ever stays the same. If it's not getting better, it's getting worse. Don't lose sight of your dreams. Whether you see a clear path before you today, or even if it's just the next steps, the next class, the next assignment, the next orientation welcome weekend activity, the next dream, many of us here will support you in taking that next step. One more word but with Latin origin, community. It's derived from communis and the old French communité. It means common. We share many of the same big dreams, and even when the details of our dreams are unique to each of us, we share a common academic quest, and we strive for gold. Welcome to our Albright community. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dylan Cope, class of 2022, your president of the Student Government Association, to lead you in the call to this new incoming class. Dylan. Dr. Campbell. Uh, I just want to say it does feel weird being up here because I didn't get the memo that we had to wear fancy robes. So, <laughs> but for the faculty and staff that don't know, our theme for this welcome weekend is Madagascar. So I am representing Penguin Fam. Can I hear Penguin Fam over there? <laughs> but for the call to the class, as a formal commitment to do your part as a student member of this community, I ask you to join me in making the same pledge I made when I first arrived at Albright. Fellow students, please stand for the call to membership printed on the back of the program. New Albrightians, Albright offers you the possibilities of personal transformation and lifelong enrichment that can result from a fully engaged student life at a liberal arts college. You must accept the challenge of making this happen for yourself and promise to help maintain the atmosphere needed for all others. Join me in accepting this challenge as we recite together this pledge printed on the back of your program. And please stand for this. Thank you. And please also recite this as we go along, or this will be very awkward. I accept that I today become an important member of the past, present, and future of Albright College. I accept my responsibility for my own social, intellectual, and spiritual growth at Albright College. I pledge to leave Albright a better place because I was here. I commit myself to the ideals and promises expressed today. Albright's future begins now and includes me. That was all right. <laughs> it was a little. <laughs> Please stand now if you are able and join in the singing of our alma mater printed on your program, and remain standing for the benediction and the recessional, allowing the faculty and plat platform party to recess from the chapel via the center aisle.
What Dylan doesn't know is that all of us up here were wishing we could have been wearing what he was wearing. <laughs> the benediction is a time, it also comes from the Latin benedictus, means a good word or a word of blessing. And it reminds us that at the end, God looks upon us with favor, that he looks upon us with a, a look of blessing, and he wishes to see us prosper in our work. So receive this benediction now from the Apostle Paul, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. <laughs>